Philly Frank. Alright, we in the building live with a yo Philly street ball legend. I mean, a lot of people that's tuned in might remember you from the N1 series. Probably not. <laughs> uh, they tuned in, they definitely know. So before we get to that, let's speak on like what part of the city are you from originally? No, with the F. Northside, okay, okay. So what was it like coming up? You know, your upbringing, how you get into basketball, what age you start ball and stuff like that? Forever. That's, I mean, that's being from the inner city, well, Detroit, here, Houston, Denver, whatever you're from. You playing a sport, you're trying to get out, baseball, football, whatever the case may be, basketball. So I've been playing that. Football is still my favorite sport. Like football was my, was my thing when I was little. So. But basketball just had to be something that I excelled in more. Well, I excelled in football more. I was still small, but when I got out of school, I left grass, I kind of got like real good in basketball, but football still my favorite sport. So, what was your experience like when you first got the end? Like, how, how you end up, you know, getting on the tour and being one of the faces of that? Like, you know, it was, was crazy. I, that just happened. It was regular Philly, you know, the thing we do for the summertime, which is Philly versus New York, Philly versus DC, Philly versus Baltimore game. It was a thing called, back then, it was called uh, uh, HoopsTV.com. So it was like, with M1, it was like how now they got the YouTube stuff and all that balls like and all that, but they was trying to do it back then without that type of streaming stuff they do then. So that back then they had it more popping. And they asked me to come up M1 and uh, just like that my man Jason Coconut had took my NBA clip team, which was me, you know, when I was out of college, to send the NBA team and put music to it, like the skip tape was. So this is like like 99. And we got their hands on it and then all the way. It wasn't really like no audition or like that. They seen it. I uh, played in the game, which was at St. Joe's, Philly versus New York. And then after that, um, they called me up like in January, uh, June, I remember in July. And yeah, we're doing a game in uh, LA. And one mixed that game. You want to play? Uh, we're going to pay you off what we get from the door. And I'm like, all right. So it was like me and Sauce, which was New York niggas. And the other thing was uh, Main, Shane, Biz, Crab, and Half, and Headed. So those guys, and then me and Sauce, who we went from New York, we went, went to LA, played, and made another game like two weeks later in, Chicago, in uh, Atlanta. No, Chicago. And then like a month later, like in September, they did a uh, Atlanta game. And then when they took my footage from my tape, some stuff Sauce had in the game from them games, and put it out in like the, the weekend before or so weekend, and then it just exploded. It's all once again, and one, mixed tapes, volume three. Check it out, introduce it, A-O! M Street Ball to the fullest, hot sauce, ATL, new moves, new footage, we about to kick it off, right now! And it was mainly because in that street ball world, that, that summertime world has always been New York. Everybody knew New York, New York, New York. But they had two guys, one from Philly, one from Atlanta, and to see it, it made the whole world like, oh, it's just not New York. It's, so it kind of like blew up. And it was crazy because like it, it transitioned so fast. It was like, so that's Jan January, February 2001. And it's like, you know, it's regular. And uh, they gave me a little contract for like, I want to see, 15,000. It was like, yo, we need some product. Uh, we send you $3,500 every four months, 3300 whatever that equal out to. It was like every four months. That was that time from 2000, 2001, but I had one OC, so I was going that whole time. I was playing Israel, I was playing pro, my first year out, and uh, it blew up. And I remember I came back and had to go up there to get a, uh, it was telling me, I guess it was tricking me, like, yo, come with these boxes. So we got these seats for you, and I went up there, and they gave me 13 grand from the DVD, from the contract we had signed. So it was like, the money was like, it, it moved so fast, it was like, yo, know, we made, this much, the shop is 13,000. That was like in June. It was August, it was like, yo, you and Shane had a t-shirt. Here's 35,000. It, it was just moving so fast. So it was like, it was fast. It wasn't really like no audition. It was like, this is what it is. It kind of like, we, we all kind of like lucked onto it. There wasn't no round of reason for it. It just kind of happened. Right. So I want you to speak a little bit on like the impact those, because them tapes used to be 
everywhere. Like, them jokes was popping. Yeah. So for y'all to be underground street ballers and for people to know y'all when y'all go to all the different cities like that, what it's, was that like for you, like having the buzz and the street buzz like that from playing it, ball? I mean, it was crazy to me because it's like, uh, I'm from that world, which is like, I was in college. I'm trying, it's not like I'm trying to be a street ball player. Nobody, it wasn't, it wasn't that platform yet. It, was, it wasn't a platform where we were like, oh, I'm going to do what I'm going to do and dribble good and get money from everybody trying to make it to where everybody's trying to make it, which is the NBA or whatever case may be. And it just kind of happened. So my thing was more like, I'm just playing and doing what I'm doing. And my world was really like playing college. I was in LA and I went to Kansas, come home, and I was like, kind of like every summer, I want to go down 60 minutes to Canada. I want to go to 52nd Park Parkside and play. So that, that's all I really wanted to do. But then when that came in with the skip tape, it kind of changed everything because it, sort of how the internet is now. It made the world small. Them tapes is getting sold in Foot Lock and Foot Action. And then now you got kids from Japan and Seattle and Alaska saying exactly what you're doing everywhere. Cause you know, at that time, like internet was still on the verge of blowing up, but not to the fact, like this is real shit. If we have to be in this era, like in this era right now with that, that shit right there, motherfuckers is like multi-millionaire type shit because it's a different aspect of how it's gonna make the world smaller. Like you literally can like have a conversation with motherfucker from London on Twitter or IG or connect with on any like any given day or any given terms. So in that in that sense we was kinda like backed up a little bit, maybe five, six years, because if the N1 shit came out in like 2011, then it would have exploded way, even though it exploded then because now we're dealing with the fact like, so for you, motherfuckers grew up on that shit. And they understand that, you know, what was going on. But at that time, it was like, we was just doing it. Like, I wasn't, it was like, yo, you, my first time, it was like, yo, you can make some money off the joint. And we was like, all right, well, I, I'll come out of LA. It's a free flight. It's LA. Playing the game, niggas gonna be like, hey, 1100. Fucked it up at the bar. I came home, called me back in, like, yo, um, we doing, we going to Chicago. I think we made like 1800 uh, a piece that, it was only like seven of us. Went to Atlanta, probably the same thing, 1800. And then like the next month, my father back, like, yo, we go to 15,000, we're gonna see you $3,500 worth of gear. Uh, based off the 15,000, but it was so crazy because it went up. And I ain't gonna go into detail about money shit, but it went up like, I made 15,000 the first year, and the next year, I'm gonna give you one. So it went 15,000 next year, and the next year it was like, I didn't give me a contract for 70,000. So you understand the demographic of making money or them exploding on a global scale, because it made, like I said, the internet made the world so small with them tapes and foot lock and all that, and it made it so small. So now, like, you got a kid in fucking Philippines wearing the AO jersey, which is crazy. Like that's, that shit is is, is, a, is is fucking beyond. He don't know me on no type of scale or no personal type shit. It's like, oh, I like the way he fucking made a move. I'm going to buy a jersey. That shit is crazy. Like, cause we don't got a league. It's not like we in the NBA and it's like. A motherfucker can literally get online and watch his 82 games and like love us. That shit is like, I seen a commercial, I seen a, and they really grasped onto that shit, which, which is different. And I got it from the beginning. So like when them other companies was coming, I was like, hey, you want to fuck with Moose Yes, I want to fuck with Moose I was like on it. I wasn't bullshit. But I understood what was going on. But I wish it would have happened now around this. But this era is, that shit is crazy. Like the way it can explode way more because it's, but in that time, we got to a point where it was like, it was all over the world. And it changed so fast. That was the most part. I don't know if you want to ask, ask another question, but for me, it changed so drastically. Like, I'm on yeah, South Street, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And it's like, I'm mean, on South Street, man. It's middle of this month, it's like, hey, yo, what's up? And I'm like, what's up? You know what I mean? Like, yo, you ain't gonna sign the order? I'm like, what? No. I'm, it was regular last week, but it's like, mother got a tape now. It's like, your private space. And, I, and it's crazy. I, my man be that right there, and I do it. I still do it to this day. I don't let AI live at all. You hear me? I don't let them live at all. Like, if people come around, he be like, "Hey, I don't, yo, you want to take a picture?" I ain't taking a fucking picture. I grab the person's camera or the phone, be like, "You want to take a picture?" And he get mad and shit. Cause that person was for me. Cause it was for me. I was like, "What the fuck is going? Like what? Like, dog? I don't know. I'm just dribbling. I ain't really. But I do it with AI a lot. Like, yo, take a fucking picture." That shit changed, so, but it changed so fast. It was so, it went from like, what's up, Aaron? Mm -mm. That shit was, that shit crazy. That's what's making the same thing. Like, his shit changed drastically. Like, I'm not. Alright, so, y'all had the M1 tour and all that. 
Y'all start picking up other people on the tour and adding to the team, like the professor and a mm -hmm. bunch of other different people. So how long did that run last and what ultimately happened? Like, cause it was probably- Nothing really happened. It was more like for the, for the people that ran, really ran the company, they kind of like, and wanted to sneak the company. I mean, you know they back, so we, you know, we kind of like, we sit, we sit, we sit. <laughs> kind of like, like working on getting back. Yeah, and y'all got to the hood too. So what happened was, what happened was, um, when you're dealing with a brand that only dictates one lane of sneakers, meaning like you got on tennis, that's kind of really weird stops. But you're dealing with a whole conglomerate like Muggles about Boost because it's working. And when you're dealing with a sneaker brand that only deal with Basketball. So that's only one lane. What you dealing with? Reebok, Nike, and they got volleyball. It's a whole different. And what happened was kind of like the other companies got kind of they kind of they got kind of shook because it was like a revolution with which came through like oh because at the end of the day sneaker brands basketball rules all. Like nobody sells a million fucking pair of football cleats or soccer cleats or baseball cleats. So basketball runs all. But when you deal with a brand that only dictates basketball, where else can they go? The ceiling is, the ceiling is kind of fucked up a little bit for them because it's only basketball. You're not, you can't really make money other ways besides t-shirts and the shorts. And I think like when the, the company was going through what it was going through and the older, you know, the guys was running understood like, yo, we started for like 750,000. We are like fucking 107 million. We can get out this motherfucker with like 32 million a piece and sell it both because they understood the, the sell it, but they didn't understand it. You can really like make more money with us, which, which is why the whole aura of streetball shit always gonna be a factor. Like so, with the rebranding now, it's like all right, they're doing grassroots, but motherfuckers know exactly why a person will like identify with N1 because of me or skip or they get so at that point they didn't really get it like well, we got some NBA players we got it's like nigga you really can probably sell a hot sauce shoe for like a year for like $49 and make $5 million and you don't even get it because they thought that they had to initially like try to and it kind of fucked up the brand and then when they got it like alright maybe I sell them this is this that, that probably was the case so looking back on it now, like, do you regret? No, hell no. Hell no. This is the same point. So we can just see that certain shit need to happen in in life. Just in, you know, just in art, um, education, law, government, basketball. That type shit need to happen. That that shit spur like, or you can say like. I said the revolution of it's AI and it's us, but it spurned the whole tattoo, uh, braids, like that, that shit, that just being you, like just, like imagine, imagine this, we literally getting paid to go to other cities with fucking t-shirts and shorts on and just do whatever the fuck we want on the basketball court. And it birthed, now, <laughs> to rewind it, we fuck basketball up, like I've seen, like I've I got to the point one time, I think it was in the Philippines, and the motherfucker like took it and put it in his shirt, and he wasn't wearing his shirt, but at the same time, he like took his shirt off, and he threw the shirt up, and the ball was in the air. And I was like, I looked at Alamo, I was like, oh man, we fucked past the luck, though. Man. I understand that, but at the same time, it gave life to other motherfuckers, like the stuff, and like they, they probably won't say it. Kyrie, like Kyrie don't work on his handles for fucking 30 hours because. He's seen fucking Steve Nash. No, because of, like he wanting to dribble and wanting to put a motherfucker on the floor and wanting to see videos of you fucking niggas up. It's because of us. So at the same time, it's always like just like these, these tiles is a box or anything, but it's like we we miss something in basketball world. Now we kind of fucked it up. I ain't gonna lie about that. We, we definitely fucked it up. But I wouldn't. Re I don't regret that shit at all. Because first of all, it was fun to be able to like. Get paid to like to some shit I would do on a Sunday morning at any park. Like just go out and play. Right? That, that's some dope shit. Like yo, we gonna give you fucking nine hundred thousand? Just what? I don't know. Just do you. Like it wasn't no 
no ceilings for us. Like we can just fucking, yo, I'm, I'm gonna take the ball, I'm gonna throw that shit off the shot clock to 54 done. All right, we tell the ref not to call him. That's some dope ass shit. Like we just doing shit. So it's like, it was different. It was, so regret, ain't no regret. I regret the business aspect of it. Fuck with these niggas. Fucking a lot of money. Yeah, you had mentioned Alamo, like y'all definitely had some legendary shit. Yeah. Ball players like Alamo, uh, what's the, the big dude named that pet? Es uh, Escalade. Yeah, yeah uh, Hot Sauce, yourself. Like and I said, Rafael. Yeah. So what was that like having all those, like? It was, it was nothing. Because we didn't, for me and Sauce, it was more like, even me and Sauce, even now to this day, I'm like, yo, uh, the kid Greg Maris, the random rocker. I don't even know him. I don't know him. Get him to the rock and be doing this shit with GQ, shoot. And he walked to me like, what's up, y'all? Like, what's going on? But I'm just being real. He's like, oh, you ain't gonna speak, you don't know who I am? I'm like, no, I'm from Philly. But I got it later on, it's like, skip, man, they had their own shit when they went to N1 and kind of fucked up the rock and shit. Not fucked it up, but, so they looking at us like, who these niggas? So basketball wise, was like, y'all ain't put New York niggas over there, put these niggas that don't even play basketball, not knowing I fucking go. I fucking go. I'm looking at the camera. Like, I fucking go. That's what I do. But it, it, it was kind of fucked up. So it was like, damn, I didn't respect New York as a whole anymore. Because I was like, yo, I ain't got nothing to do with that shit y'all was going through before y'all even got to this point. Like, I don't, me and Sauce ain't got nothing to do with that shit. So, like, the disrespect y'all show us is, as far as basketball. Like, that's why I, ne first of all, I've never played in the Rock. Never. I wouldn't play. Only time I went to the Rock, like, twice, two or three times when I stopped. Professor from playing, I'll be right back. But they try to like make a mockery of this shit. Professor wasn't ready for that shit. They try to make him play one on one full court. I just had to be. I mean, we are all in the city, but I'm down in Manhattan. Shane, like, come on up. Fess about to play Herb. I'm like, why would he play Herb? He's like, it's, it's games, right? He's like, yeah. I'm like, so I like got in the cab, got up there. They're about to play. I grabbed Fess off the court. Like, no, you ain't gonna do that. They got mad. And they're like, oh, you're not gonna make a mockery of this shit. You trying to make. I said, well, make him pay me. Wouldn't do it, but. As far as regret, no. I regret the fact that like I didn't get a chance to play in that era, like just for them niggas to see me or see us. Like I played a couple, like I played indictment, I played them one, one forty fifth, one once or twice. So it's a little bit different, but it's just so nutty. But I, you know, I respect it more because if you look at them tapes, which is the best shit in the world, Skip and Iowa, them first tapes, they're only like 14, 15 years old. And I understand, I don't think people understand how dope that is for a motherfucker to be 14, 15 years old in that environment. Like, not high school, not college, but it's 3,000, 5,000 people in the park. We're grown men. And they, four, so them first tapes of Skip and Alamo, they 14, they like 15 years old. I think Skip was in, Skip and Alamo like in 10th grade. So imagine being in that, niggas is betting 40, 50,000 on game. Like, imagine being in that environment so I respect them. Like I told him about I said, yo, I told him all the time, I don't think you should. I go ask him all the time. But to be 15 years old in that environment, that shit is incredible, dog. Because that for my age, that even that time, I wasn't ready for that shit at 15. And I was like, rats, I was like, I, I'm looking at that shit like he was 15. There's no way I believe it. Nigga coming out, skipping on the court, and it's they run off, nothing to sit on gates and all that shit is different. Like that's that's a whole revolution of shit that's like I respect them for. He ended up making it to the league. I mean, but he got, well, Skip was going to be drafted regardless. So that's what, that's, what I, that's what I hate about that. Skip didn't get fucking picked out of the park. Or, oh shit, he played in the park, let's go get him. Skip got drafted. He was the 31st pick in the NBA draft. Not no fucking, oh, he went to Queens and we see a nigga in the park that was good. No, he got, he went to Fresno State, played fucking good, he got drafted. That shit way different than Muppet just picking you up out of fucking. Parkside or fucking Myers or some shit like that. That shit's way different. So Skip got drafted. So it's, and that that kind of that, that was kind of like a, a divide in that one shit anyway. Because Skip was like kind of, you know, the nigga was like, oh, well, he not really on tour. He just had the tape. We had the tour. So that was another shit. Skip had the tape. The Skip was never the tour. He came on tour. We came on tour. So it was like, oh, the Skip. I don't know, like the Skip that was on tour. When the Skip was maybe on tour, it was like two or three times or something. It's thirty six cents. It might be on tour like two, three times a so it's a little bit different. But I regret and all that shit is, nah, that shit was dope. And <laughs> the bitches. I'm saying that shit loud. I want to jump back a little bit to, to before all of this. I want you to speak on some of these legendary moments that the 16th possessed with Hannah Jones. 
that was like a legend, like, you know, we'll get that notoriety there, like the record park and all that. But that was like one of the places that but they know. like he was pooping. They know. They we know. had to go down there. You know, we had legends like Sad Eyes, people legends but like that. It's the only legend. Ain't no legends like Sad Eyes. It's the only legend. Yeah, so That's speak a little bit on that. Give him that story. He just, Sad was like my, I know Sad from, you know, just being out and about and it's like, play ball in these leagues, blah, blah, blah. And I had, uh, I'm, I'm kind of a late bloomer in the aspect of like me going on 16th Street. I'm playing them leagues, but like even playing with grants and not really getting in, but I still could play. It was more like, I was small as shit. So I was like, I'm 6'3 now. So when I graduated from high school, I was like, 5'7". So imagine that jump from my graduating in June to I went. Up, I didn't. Play, I didn't go to school my first year. So from June to like September, I was six one. So I damn like seven fucking. Years. Like I, I got. But then like playing down there was like my first. Yeah, I went to L.A. and Riverside and uh, hey, you know all this North niggas love sad. And uh, my oldest, I don't whatever. My oldest champ uh, was was a street nigga back in the day. Whatever, get my name. And they had the team of sad and um, we just tossed it up the best fucking. Some league team ever in Philly, I might say. And uh, we played the Hollow. I just came home from school since so like '97. Then you know how old I am, like '97. And uh, playing the Hollow the first game, I'm home, and it was kind of like too many niggas on the team. So it was like me, Sad, uh, Sean Colson. It was like a lot of people. It was so many people on the team. It was like I ain't had to do that. So we kind of walk into the car like eight, eight o'clock. Tossed up first game is down fucking 16th Street, and me and my me and my man Jody get in the car with Champ, and I'm like, yo, I want to play on 16th Street. He like, what? So Champ like, what? He ain't doing nothing. I said, well, I ain't really got to do nothing. Here. But Champ was still trying to be my old here and not tell me directly, like, you know, you can't fucking play. He's like, being, you know, all right. Sad walking down the street in the truck. That was the one thing first. All of them had to share these jeeps. Fucking share these. Sad to me on that. So Champ going in the back because they get the seats together. So this is this is how old this is. It's the first phones. So you how old this is? 97. The real, the, 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 the blue fucking pennies. We got it. I don't got it because I ain't on the team. And he kind of tried to push me off on Sad like, yo, Aaron want to play tonight. And Sad said, he can play. And it kind of fucked Champ up like, oh shit, so you got to let me play. If you jump in the car, I ain't saying nothing else. You're going in there. This is the back of 16th Street. I don't know if you know what the tennis course at. We back there. And I don't even know about the sneaks. So we get back there, we get the jerseys. And this is the shit where it's like Philly shit get no notoriety. We had a fucking DJ. Now, I don't know if y'all know uh, Jake, the stripper. He used to be on 105.3, 99, uh, Power 99. It was just, he was a DJ. We had our, he was our old DJ. Jake pull up, come around the park, go through all the people in his van, pull behind the fucking barricade, bring his speakers out, hook his shit up to the pole, and play music for us. And that shit was the, the song. I toss it up. You got your phone. You got your phone. We had a whole thing. So now it's like, I'm cool. And then the song came on, and this is what happened. I had my my uh, white uh, sleep from school. My coach sent me some students sleep from school. Brandon, I was going to play these. I said, like, yo, where's the sneaks at? So Shane was like, he just fucked out on the team like, like 20 minutes ago. He was like, what size you got? Like, 10 and a half. So Shane had the sneaks on. He was like, man, give me your fucking sleep. He was like, what? He said, y'all want the same size? Gave me a sneak. I'm cool. But then, you know, like, coming out of that hill around from the fucking tennis court, it's like, it's regular, it's regular. And we walk in that court, and it's like 5,000 people out there. And it's like, oh, my mom is like, oh, shit, little Aaron playing with all stuff. I'm like, oh, shit. This is, I, no, uh, what's the fucking, what's the, the, the army shit? Be like, well, you went to shit now. You went to, uh, hey, what's the fucking movie? Uh, well, what's they playing the black guy? Robert Downey Jr. Uh, yeah, Travis Thunder be like, well, you want this shit. Like, you want and I'm just like, and it just so happened, it was the, it was the realest game ever. It was like, uh, Bo, Bozo from Uptown, Brickyard, had the Uptown team. But he, like, for that first game that was playing us, he had, like, it was Cat, Cat, uh, Cat Mobley, Al Williams, Turk Mott, Malik yeah, Rose, NBA, Mal the yeah, Malik Rose, and Jason Lawson. Playing, start game start. I mean, they, I ain't even playing. So it was black. Rise, sad, move, no, we're going out in Sanford. And we like three minutes in, and Rye get two fouls on our wings. And I'm still like, ah, whatever, I might get in. And it's like, come back two more times and say, like, what the fuck you doing? Shit, like, what? He's like, 
What he meant? And I'm sitting like, who went? And I'm like, what? <laughs> who went? But then he had to sell rub out, and I got like five straight fucking wins. And it was like, because I was just playing. I was just, I was just, and after that, it was just like, and then, hold on, <laughs> the bitches. Like, this was, <laughs> this just hurt. Because now I'm dealing with a whole bunch of old motherfuckers. It's like, who the young face nigga that was awesome out there? <laughs> But the, the, the air right there was like crazy. It was like, we don't, it's, it, and it's fucked up now because like when I deal with kids, I coach an album now, JV. So it's like, they don't even get that, that, that ambiance, that, cause the, the feel that in the summer, like kids don't really, and it's like, I did the thing today with, uh, I don't know if you know Khalif, Khalif White. I did Khalif, yeah, yeah, Marathon. Right? I think it's Marathon joined today. But I think Khalif just got back. But I did this thing now, and then it was like, kids literally have to have an adult, they probably don't know and their parent pay them to train them to. And it's not the same, you know, like I tell them, so I'm telling them today, like, yo, like, even when you're around, like, you just gotta compete and like learn how to just, it's crazy, cause like, like I'm playing ball 12, 13 hours a day in the summer. And I, I be like, literally like, my team and Allen be like, yo, we should break on Friday, I'll be on Monday, like, what did I do this weekend? Mother was be like, oh, I was a little bitch, I was four nine. I was like, you ain't playing the ball? I was like, nah, so it's like, so since so Friday, Saturday, Sunday, like no ball. And I was like, yo, I play ball every, I find a gym every day and it's like so different because it's so, it's kind of easy for them. Like, I'm looking to have a good summer, get on YouTube and damn it on his draft board. Just the way he looked on, on the internet. And that's crazy. That's like, just on the AMLA rebrand. Like, are you, you been like that? I went them all the way because I understand that it, I want the business to be good. You always want the business to be good. You want it, you want it to be straight on it. But I understand that there's certain, when you're dealing with us, that we get to get out there and reach these kids, it ain't gonna be no bullshit. Like it ain't gonna be no, because even when we do it, we make money from it, but it ain't gonna be, we ain't making enough money where it's like a mother can tell you some shit and then walk away and be like, oh, I made four million, that. like it ain't gonna be that much, but it's more like, I can tell from example, like, little niggas, it's different. Like you, you can, you can like, be good today and like the coach will see you home tomorrow and get another fucking end. Like it's, it's just different, like the whole, Situation is different. Like you gotta, so I'm, I'm I'm happy for that. We can like rebrand it and like teach kids the whole concept of like playing hard, compete. That's that's one thing I, I hate about this area. Like motherfuckers don't compete. Like a motherfucker be like two motherfuckers are group, both of them good, and they kind of like go in and push play each other. And it's kind of like I'm over here, you over here. Fuck that shit. Still sharper still. My man to, to my death. Uh, my man Nick living in Atlanta. And I, when I say like this motherfucker, basketball wise, one of my best friends ever hated me, foul me, call me pussies, want to fight, like, but that was that's basketball because how you if you can't deal with this nigga, how the fuck you gonna deal with a motherfucker when you run into him in college from Iowa or Nebraska or Seattle or that's competing or fucking walk on who need the scholarship kind of. So therefore you the fucking McDonald's All American. I'm talking to the camera. You the McDonald's All American. You're dealing with a motherfucker that barely get a scholarship. Of course he's gonna guard you hard, but you're not used to competing. That shit is off and not because he's going hard every fucking play. But you're thinking like, oh, I'm good. And from my era, like that, you had to work for that shit. Like, that shit was, it was different, man. But now it's like, I told you, like you can like have a fucking good summer and get on YouTube and it's like, oh, this shit nigga about to get drafted. It's like, this shit nigga last year, he was fucking hard. Like, but it is what it is. I thought we talking about fucking fake anyway. I'm like, Boy, you wanted the fucking bus and shit. <laughs> God, that was bullshit. Go ahead, plug your social media. I, know you I ain't got it. Oh, no, I, you definitely be active on Twitter. Well, that's Twitter. That's all. Twitter, A to the O. I ain't you got no type of. I have no type of social presence, so it's like I'm tweeting. I ain't don't come to my Twitter, ask me why I'm saying this. I'm saying whatever the fuck I want. A number two, D A O. That's it. I ain't got no Instagrams. I ain't got no fucking Facebooks. Cause I ain't weird. You got Facebook? You got Facebook? Yes, you got fucking Facebook. I know you got Facebook. Facebook. I know you got Facebook. You know you got Facebook? You want to connect with all your old bitches. I know you got Facebook. So I ain't got no Facebook. I only got A to the O Twitter. That's it. I ain't got no fucking Tinder. Tinder. You got Tinder? Tinder. Who you got Tinder? You got Tinder? So I ain't got no Tinder. So it's A to the O on Twitter. I just went on there talking shit other than that. That's it. Right Ain't really no plugs. You got any kids you want me to train? I train. Hopefully, they fucking good and they ready for the real.